Oh shit. Oh. There we go. Look at these hey. So I was talking about the the cat mummies, right? Oh, cat mummies. Yeah, let's open with that. Okay. So uh it's like the S- Saqqara tomb in Egypt. Yeah. Yes. And it's like the whole village is built around like working archaeological like stuff on this site. Like there's a ton of jobs circulating there. Like that's what they do. The tombs there, so a lot of people have found jobs doing that. So there's like a whole team of people right now, or at least that were, that are just there finding all these mummified cats. Just very, you know, daintily brushing dust off these giant Egyptian cats. And are they in structures? Yeah, like inside pyramids, like So they're yeah, they're they're excavating the grounds of some, you know, ruins and pyramids and what have you. Yeah. And they're finding a bunch of cats that were mummified and preserved and then stored along with, we're assuming, royalty of the day. Yeah, and it's just, I'm assuming they're just his cats. And I just think maybe, like, I don't know. Are we just looking at, like, a crazy cat person? Or was something going on with cats, like... Well, and like what I mean, because people don't do that now. They don't. They don't usually include the family dog in the burial plot, right? You know what I mean? No. Um, and you know, I'm not really for the preserving of the actual vessel. I, you know, personally, no. you know, and a lot of people I know, we'd rather be cremated and then made, you know, in permanent somewhere. You know, because think about it. There's. I mean, they're, they've been burying people for thousands of years, and it, there's nobody that was ever buried under my house, ever? Ever. You're saying ever? Oh. I mean, I don't want a bunch of money-hungry money-hungers to uh, hire a bunch of Cubans to dig me out once it's been 200 years and they know no one's coming to look for me. Yeah. And I only say Cubans because I actually saw that on the news one time. <laughs> It, they were interviewing a Cuban guy who was like, they made me dig up these bodies that were people that were dead for a long time and nobody cared. So we dug them up so they could bury new people there. Not me. Not me, Jesus. No, I want to be a... There's these tree pods. Like, you can put yourself in this this pod. It's like with a seed attached or a fruiting body of, of some sort. And this tree grows from your... Your Did body you just pie. say a fruiting body? Yes. Okay, good. That's biology, motherfucker. <laughs> I actually don't know if that's 100% true for all trees. Is a fruiting body necessary for plant reproduction? Brother, I don't, that's something you and you got to take up with Miss Siri. There's got to be different. I mean, there's asexual plants. That's what... Oh, wait, no. That's the whole point. What? I don't know, like a dandelion doesn't have to be male or female. Yeah, but there must be. I don't know. I don't know how plants work. Yeah, I took a class on this once. Um, Something about, uh, you know, they germinate. But isn't it a male part of the plant and a female part of the plant? And they're part of the same plant? So yeah, like a plant could be a male, the male and, and so a female. So like one tree would germinate uh, male components, let's say, that would then travel to other trees to be received by those trees' female components. Meanwhile, that first tree is going to be receiving some male input from another tree. Correct? Am I making this up? No, that sounds right. Did they, <laughs> did they ever mummify a tree, Barry? I don't think her actually actually yeah did There's the Egyptians the, have petrified wood they did the very weird petrified wood I, I read something about this too I can't <laughs> this is that's gonna be the thing today it's gonna be it's gonna be uh things Barry read once things <laughs> wait hold up <laughs> I can feel it happening already <laughs> Every every 90 seconds bro I read something about this you're reading a lot Barry you're a literate guy I swear, it's not just me that just said I read something. You know, there's, there's 
I got my sources. Yeah, I know. I'm, <laughs> hey, listen, I believe you. I, I believe all berries. I just be on Reddit a lot. I can't. I don't know. That's, that's what, what I, it is. You know, I just don't feel like I know how to work Reddit because I feel like my opinion of it emotionally is that it's not as user friendly as like a Facebook or an Instagram. But I feel like that's just because I'm missing something. You gotta like, cur- like I like the old it. internet aesthetic of it and the whole like it's a message board vibe like from back in the day, like and I'm hip to that. And there's just you can you know find threads about anything. I mean, I, I mean know. that's what's kind of cool about it though. You find these like niche communities, you know. And if it doesn't exist, like you can build it from there. Like there's even a small like you r slash unicycle community, like. And it's not huge. Like, I could probably look it up right now. Do you think Jeff Bezos uses Reddit to find people to take to space? I mean, as much as one would use a, the, the Facebook or Twitter to find find the same thing. I mean, there are some smart people on Reddit, but it's also, like, social media in a way. Or at least, like, the comment section of the social media isolated. Yeah, that's kind of my favorite part, though, is, like, when people There's just... No profile. When we, we, someone says something... And then people just roast the fuck out of them. Yeah, and it's kind of great. And <laughs> it's enjoyable is the word, I think. It's definitely enjoyable. Okay, let's start the show. So uh, welcome back to Jacob V Weekly. It's been a couple of weeks. Get off me. Okay, you come over here and do it. You come over here and plug all this shit in. I was just telling Barry all this shit we got to plug in. Jesus. <laughs> We want to invite you, as always, to uh, at the top of the show to donate to Caddyshack of New Hamill, Illinois. That's Caddyshack I L on Facebook. You just type in at Caddyshack C A T T Y S H A C K I L on Facebook. Local cat rescue, the real deal kind of operation over there. Save a life or nine. Patreon Barry, help me out. Patreon.com slash Jacob V. Patreon.com J A C O B V I. Exclusive content every week. And it's the only way for you to really support this show because I'm not good at answering emails about Raid Shadow Legends. So. Even if I had an offer from them, I, I don't know how to, I don't know what my status of that conversation is. Email really fell out when I uh, abandoned my career uh, in education to do whatever it is I do now. Uh, Stream Daddy is my new uh, title at the Ethical Society. Uh, I do their stream there, manage their stream. Same thing, it's easier here for sure. That reminds me, I got to clip something for them. Um, thanks for reminding me of that, Barry. Yeah, yeah. Instagram, you can follow the show at Instagram at uh, Jacob V Weekly on Instagram. You can call the show. We'll talk about that later. You can also email the show. We'll talk about that. Barry, did you drive here? Yeah, I drove here. I associate so much guilt with driving. Driving. Like yeah. I'm, a, I'm a highly creative dude, so I worry all the time of and like this. I have this anxiety and this imposter syndrome and this struggle with my impulses and you know low self esteem and whatnot since the beginning of whenever. And I'm driving and I'm picturing myself having to defend my driving to other people around me. I'm seeing traffic. Like for example, I'm sitting in traffic thinking like me and this blue Chevy Spark are going to pull over. We're gonna sit down. And we're gonna talk about. Listen, I didn't make that red light because the guy in front of me barely made it. I mean, I don't want to run a yellow. I'm a cannabis patient in the suburbs right now, and I'm trying to get this fried chicken back home. And I have no evidence of actually doing anything wrong or even upsetting anybody. But I'm in my head. I'm like going. I'm in therapy with these people mediating our traffic experience and they don't even have to do anything they didn't even look upset they knew we weren't going to make that light you know i hate i hate driving arguments but that's the thing i've never even had one you've never had one i've never had to actually yell at someone about my driving have you never experienced road rage not in the way that actually things were really exchanged i mean I've, i've been given the finger once or twice Oh man, I've I've had a couple where like like I had a dude that was like fo- following me out of a neighborhood and he like 
whipped up to the side of me. Uh, and just started like yelling, like yelling. Fucking. You know what? One time on my way to work, <laughs> I had a guy who I came up behind him at one point, like a mile and a half in into my commute, and then, but then he ends up keep trying to stay right next to me, which freaks me out because I feel like he's gonna shoot me. And then <clears throat> at one point, like we're going, he's taking all the same turns I'm doing. He keeps trying to like. I'll speed up and then he'll speed up and then I'll slow down because I don't want to be parallel to him. And then he'll slow down. And at one point I like completely stopped to see if I can get him to go away. And he <laughs> completely stopped. I had enough though. I, I dove into this uh, little neighborhood there and then he didn't follow me that way. I don't know what he wanted. I don't know if he was, maybe he was going to ask for money for all I know, but it was so weird. So, I mean, I don't know if that was a road rage thing, but I reacted as if the, uh, potential for violence was there you know what i mean i gotta get low you know what i'm saying i gotta bounce out it's always possible you never imagine the possibilities the possibilities is that a pasta house i think that's one of their slogans no wait actually oh yeah imagine the possibility oh man that is so clever that's really good (laughs) that's great i say it all the time that's uh, that's amazing. Not even about pasta. My family used to go there all the time. They got. We used to hit up this pasta. Yeah. We had a pasta house pronto, which was like a quick serve version, and I used to smash that something fierce. I'd go to pasta house right now though and bash out. I'd get the you know parmesan with oh. the white pasta. Oh yeah, and all the, you can eat salad. Dude, bitch. The ro- why is that salad rolls. so good? The salad. It's because they put the boss. It's like a. It's not balsamic. No, not balsamic. It's like an Italian what dressing, it? but it's just—it's so wet. A, it's a wet salad. Yeah. It's not dressed to order. It's dressed in batches. It's yeah. Wet. And they also put tons of parmesan on it too. Yeah, it's fucking. It yeah. all sticks to the lettuce and shit. And the lettuce really doesn't have any tr- um, like a uh, real nutritional value. Artichokes. That's what's in it. There's art. There are artichoke hearts. <laughs> the artichoke. Hearts. You, you get like one of those per scoop. <laughs> yeah. Per hefty scoop. I just spent fucking 30 minutes at the fucking deli counter. Our republic has collapsed and we're all doomed, Barry. What? 30 minutes? Brother, I was in the grocery store and I went to the little kiosk, little iPad on the wall, and I put in my boar's head order and then I went and I did the rest of my shopping. And I came back and then stood at the deli counter for 30 minutes. Damn. I got jumped a whole bunch. There were just the volume was just crazy. So it, it scares me. What'd you get from the deli though? I just needed uh uh I got a pound of smoked gouda and I got half a pound of gouda. the ever roast chicken, or maybe it was the oven gold turkey, one of those two. Ugh, yeah. For the missus. That's it. That's always good. I mean, I, yeah, I wasn't getting ignorant. I wasn't I didn't order a trough of uh head cheese or nothing. Jeez. Monkey brains. Monkey brain? I don't think you could say that. What does that mean? What? What are you talking about? What? Like, monkey brains? Yeah, like eating. <laughs> You've never heard, like, we we're talking about Egypt and stuff. There's. <laughs> what? I, w- I was I was waiting for you to explain the monkey brains. <laughs> but, I don't know. I, it's I like thought a de- you died on me. No, it's like a deli option. They have that? <laughs> Is it from a monkey? Well, no, but sometimes... <laughs> no, there's not actually. You can't actually eat monkey brains, I don't think. I'm sure you can somewhere. Not that I'm condoning that. That's terrible. I think poaching is awful. <laughs> I'm sure people are eating monkeys. Yeah, poaching monkeys too. It's it's just for sport. No, are there monkeys that you can eat? I don't know. I mean, are there monkeys that it's legal to eat? I mean, it must be a thing somewhere. But is that okay? I'll do it, Barry. I mean, we eat cows. Is there some place where you can legally eat a monkey? Oh yeah, I guess I could have done that. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I did it right. I don't know if I did. Look, this is the fucking boomer hour right here. Is there a place where I can legally eat monkey? What's the meat term for monkey? You know how chicken is poultry? What's monkey? What kind of Monkey mammal? meat is the flesh and other edible parts derived from monkeys. A kind of bush meat. Bush meat? 
the Congolese view monkey meat as an ordinary delicacy and a must eat. So in Congo, you know, we're talking about honeymooning in Africa. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. I really want to get in a cage in the ocean with a shark, but uh, I don't know if we're going to go to a place where that's an option. Never in my life. Man, would do that? you would think that, and then I got to the point where I imagined it really happening, and I, I imagined the fear, but then imagine the in, the mania you would feel surviving it. <laughs> I mean, like that's a good so point. You get so scared, but what am I going to do, piss in my wetsuit? I'm going in the ocean. It, the ocean is piss. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there's still no way. The ocean is piss. Uh, I'm gonna go to Africa. I'm gonna swim with a shark, well, do, and I'm I mean, gonna eat a monkey's brain. All in, of the water, Congo. All of the water has been piss at some point, right? How dare you? Right. I mean, no. I with think all of the it, life. I think if it um, that pisses if it sh- goes through the water cycle, and then doesn't interact with piss when you sample before you sample it, it it will be piss free. Well, are you, so you're saying because when the water evaporates, it leaves the piss particles behind, like the you know the sodiums and the sh- and the and the glycerins and the whatnot, and it's just pure water that goes up into the atmosphere and then it forms clouds. And I want to write a children's book about this. <laughs> it's been a dream of mine to supplement my retirement. I really need to get on it. Wait, <laughs> about like. Just about the water cycle, not about piss. Okay, I was like, no, like no. pee in the water cycle. No, not about how guys. It's okay to drink tap water because it used to be piss, but it's not anymore. That's not the angle. Um, you just got to make children's books educational about so many things now, and so you know you can't just write something about a bear that loves his mom. Like that's not gonna. I mean, there's got to be trauma. There's got to be science. You know what I mean? There's two things I know about uh, children's literature in the 21st century. Some of that older, those older kids books are kind of creepy. Like the, the Grimm's fairy tales and stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Horrible. I mean, like OG Cinderella. Like her, her sisters were like cutting their feet off and shit. Yeah, they cut. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Parts of their big old chunks of foot meat. Oh, uh, <laughs> let's let's hit some news. What do you say, Barry? Um, FBI says St. Louis serial killer connected to at least six deaths since September. We've talked about this on the show. Um, FBI was working on the case is the last thing we really knew. Multiple fatal shootings, including one that claimed the life of a 16 year old girl, have been linked to a 25 year old man who is now facing a bevy of charges in St. Louis and St. Louis County. Uh, Perez Reed has been charged with two counts of first degree murder, three counts of armed criminal action, and another count of assault. Um, police are applying for two additional murder charges, uh, as well. So weird if it's actually this guy and that that's the end of it, because he's not your typical serial killer looking type, but who knows? They picked a really scary picture of him. So how do... We know that he's tied. Like, have they presented any, like, evidence? Yet? No, actually, when I originally read this, I don't even think his name was out yet. Oh, interesting. So, okay. Yeah, this was exploding just the other day. Maybe two days ago, I put this in the prep. Uh, we've just got some evidence that would indicate that the same perpetrator or perpetrators may have been involved in these incidents. One of those was the ballistics. Is It was the same gun. Oh, dang. In, like, the first three attacks. So, um like immediately like the ballistics are like no there there's no way that there's two people doing the exact same kind of thing with this like same I mean it was like absolutely the same gun so I would assume that the ballistics are going to be a big deal there wasn't enough information to describe the killings a serial in nature uh initially but then I think that yeah I think that's what they're saying is that um it became a series later and i think because of those ballistics i believe we did good i believe we took a violent predator off the street these appear to be random acts so he was obviously oh, upset about something i don't yeah that that was the thing is that they were so unconnected you know what i mean the people the victims were completely unconnected it wasn't like it was all people involved in one thing of any type really how, how far apart are the the killings uh Uh, 
um they were like one week in september i think it was like september 15th 16th 19th 20th dang uh, are the dates I'm seeing throughout this article here. So, uh, yeah, just I saw that. We had to follow up on it. Yeah, they picked a picture of him that makes him look like a black Charles Manson. Like, he's got a moon tattoo on his face, and he's squinting really weird. So, I mean, maybe he always looks like this, but I don't know. It's hard to know. We'll. See. I'm hoping the trial will be somewhat transparent. Uh, speaking of crimes, dealer admits to selling fentanyl laced counterfeit drugs that killed Mac Miller and faces 20 years in prison. Dang. That's a sad, sad story. <sighs> oh, that's terrible. Yeah, that's still, I and mean, he was really hitting a, a really beautiful place in his career. Such an awesome dude. Those drugs though. I mean, he was what? 27 when he. He and was uh, tw- he's actually 26. He was younger, yeah. Yeah, he was 26. I mean, because you can't be doing pills like that for a long time. Like, I think even little Zan is off of Zan. Little Zan, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you can't just keep doing pills heavy like that, right? No, it's just bad. I don't know anyone who's like, man, I've been doing pills for 37 years. <laughs> like, that, I don't think it has that longevity. I mean, you have internal organs in your body. I don't know. There's some people that just... They got the genetics to live. Like, there's this dude okay. who's like, it's like cigars and whiskey every day, his whole life. He's like 90 something years old. Perfectly healthy. Perfectly healthy. Yeah. Like, wow. I don't find the name. I don't know if anyone who's 90 is perfectly healthy. Okay, not perfectly, but, you know, he's living longer than most. Mm. You know this person? Hell, uh, n- nope. No. No, that's no. a video I saw, and I'm going to find the dude's name now. That's funny. Well, it's funny, Barry. It's funny. I'm going to find the name. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah. Oh, you're here. I found a picture of him. Oh, yeah? Do you have like some copy you can read while I pee real quick? Oh, yeah. I'll find something. Yeah, this is a test, Barry. Oh, yeah. I got I, you. I need you to talk to the people. This is a pee-friendly podcast. <laughs> And sometimes that's inconvenient. This is okay. So you're talking about, what, he's 90? Oh, no, he's 111. He's 111? Yeah, yeah. Okay, here's... Okay, it's, uh... This is an article. It's from the the Dallas Morning News. uh, So, he's 111. America's oldest veteran is still smoking cigars, drinking whiskey, and loving life. And... Oh, and his name's Richard Overton. Says he smokes 12 cigars a day, <laughs> he eats grits for breakfast, spends his days on the front porch of his Austin home. Oh, man. I just don't know how you could do that. Like, cigars and whiskey every day? I'd be getting that acid reflux. <sighs> Dang. He's our nation's oldest veteran. He was born in 1906. Dang, that's how like when my dad's dad was born, which makes him old too. He's not alive anymore, but he would have been around the same age if he was. Yeah, Overton, Richard Overton. Yeah, that's pretty. That old son of a bitch. Hundred and eleven. So what did I miss? What's the secret? What should I start doing? Is it the uh, turmeric? Yeah, no, no secret. Just whiskey and cigars, I guess. Keeping it simple. I was trying to cut back on those two things. You know, maybe it's just a fluke. He's just... Well, and that's what I was thinking. Like, there's got to be a combination of gene pools that would yield longevity, right? I mean, there must be. Like... Like, you know, you, you take, like, a population that's has very low incidence of dementia and then you breed them with a population that has very low incidence of cancer or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I don't know how genetics works. You don't know about genetics? <laughs> Not like you don't know for... about plants. You don't know about <laughs> genetics? I don't know if this is going to work out, Barry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was never meant to be a scientist. Man, there's this podcast I'd never listened to before called Drink Champs. Apparently, Kanye West is friends with these guys. Oh, yeah? It's like a, it's like a B-list rapper and a famous DJ, and they have a podcast together, and they drink with celebrities or whatever. And I, wasn't, I didn't mean B-list to be mean. Uh, it sounded that way. 
Um, but Kanye West, of all people, went on and actually did two episodes. He was on last week and this week, and he was full manic. I don't know if you know me. I'm a huge Kanye fan. Oh, yeah. And not in spite of um, the mania, the bipolar mania. Um, some highlights include his feelings about Big Sean and John Legend and how they are in bed with the establishment Democrats and how we haven't seen Kamala since the election. He kept saying that. Um, he said uh, they got a 90% of the black female vote. You would have thought Drake was running. <laughs> and apparently they're not actually divorced, him and Kim. They just announced that she was filing for divorce, but apparently he's never seen the papers. And it was wild as shit. It was three hours of that. And, you know, he would say things like, meanwhile, I didn't get this job at Gucci. And I'm we're blood of Christ. We're blood of Moses. And I'm like, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, he's just I don't know, it makes for great art Oh my god, it was good i And that's the thing, I love the music may, Talk to me a little bit about that I mean, you're younger than me So you're maybe even deeper Into just the cultural saturation of Kanye West I mean You know, I I think that He's made a really Huge impact in like The way that music is produced He kind of changed the game a little bit When he was coming out with some of that stuff Early on Sorry, you're your cat's giving me some love over here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. As they, they hate this show. The cats are on a mission to destroy my show. They shit on the floor once during the middle of the show. <laughs> Dude, that's what they do. And um, so, yeah, that's but, kind of my thing is like, I mean, I like the music a lot. You know, so, I mean, the hits. But uh, I think like Yeezus is probably my favorite album. Mm -hmm. Like Blood on the Leaves and like New Slaves. Like those are like my favorite Kanye of all time, but I lo yeah, I mean, I just love his development of. He makes me want to get an MPC really bad. Um, sampler drum thing <laughs> that the hip hoppers like to use. Dude, those are cool. I was actually just looking at some of those, just well, like a bunch of pads. Well, and it's just like the sampling. You can edit the exact length of your sample and fit it into a tempo, and I mean, you just. You could do it all live in that thing. Right. Uh, and they're not expensive like they once were. They used to be thousands of dollars, and they're just not. Like, a brand new one is, like, a thousand bucks of the latest model. That It's, like, standalone still. But wow. Yeah, it's got a crazy screen on it. And um, and it's standalone. Like, you can use it with your computer, or you could use it standalone. So, you can, like, he was talking about, like, you know, I was in the oh, Mercer nice. with a Don Juan snapback and I was chopping up Otis on my MacBook. <laughs> and uh, the whole the whole thing was like that. It was really great. It was a lot about fashion. I guess he spends a, his lot of, a lot of his time there. He's traveling right now. He's purposefully homeless. He's staying at Elon Musk's house for a month coming up, apparently. Yo, that's nuts <laughs> so we're in a simulation i do want to say one thing i i did get called out about this I, you hear me say all the time that the tragedy of uh harambe being executed is really when i feel like around the time it's a good mark in time you know for when we split off into this version of the timeline that we're still experiencing and i'm not thrilled about it damn man it was the same around the same time, you know, there was the 2016 yeah. election. David Bowie had just died. I mean, it was that a dark was right. period. Mm -hmm. You know, we lost Prince. That was a that was a bad year. It was heavy, brother. And I don't think we've ever recovered. No. And, then and uh, but I but so acknowledging that I did also say that sometimes I like videos of the Cincinnati Zoo hippos on TikTok. And I just want to <laughs> apologize for not making that connection. I did get called out by uh, by a listener for uh, he's like you're watching the Cincinnati Zoo on TikTok. That's who killed Harambe. And I said, Jesus fucking Christ, you're right. <laughs> oh no, those hippos are propaganda agents. They're bad actors. <laughs> propaganda hippos. Propaganda hippos. That sounds like a math rock band. Yeah, I'm in bands with worse names than that. That's for sure. How many bands are you in right now? Too many. I don't even count anymore. It's really just, I mean, you know, the band is still continuing if they call me and we book something. That's pretty nice. It's it's hard. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a lot going on. This whole doing it full time thing. And that's, you know, part of why the shows have been two weeks apart is uh, just gigging into the ground. I gigged yesterday and then went to a dinner party. 
Where'd you play yesterday? Faith Church. Oh, nice. But we were playing our secular jams. They wanted to have a little family-friendly top 40 uh, non-sacred option for just the end of this conference they were doing there. There were hundreds of cars. It was crazy. This bit mega church thing. I don't know. I got in bed with the wrong people. That's the business for me, I think. I need to head that way. Ch- like church band? I mean, yeah. I mean, the church thing. I mean, these, the it's just the... Good. It's a top-notch facility. That's nice. I mean, I don't know if they pay musicians, so... You know, a lot of churches don't pay guitar players because you really don't need to. <laughs> Why not? Because you can get one for free. There's one that's already going to be there. There's always going to be a guy there. Like, you know, I got a Schecter at home. <laughs> I noticed the worship team doesn't have a guitarist. I mean, you wouldn't have to pay me. I would just sit Dude. in and just donate the time, you know, for the Dude, Lord. I know that guitar. It's it's a black Schecter He's diamond black series. Quilt, quilted maple <laughs> top, like silver burst black <laughs> with like the pearloid binding. Oh, yeah. Full trim, brother. Locking Floyd, brother. Maybe a Sustaniac. Maybe it's the Sinister Gate signature. Dude, with the bats? Yeah, with the bats on it. With the bats. And uh, (laughs) and then he's up there playing a G, because G is for God. (laughs) G, 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 G. (laughs) Yeah. I was just watching School Rock the other day. Yeah, G, 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 G. Um, I pulled up, and, you know, and speaking of McDonald's, those fuckers, I pulled up in a drive through window at McDonald's the other Dude, day, and the guy me. went, oh my god, are you Jack Black? I said, that's not even, I'm a three feet taller than him. Like, what are we? What? I know, I pulled up in the window, and the kid in the window said, oh my god, are you Jack Black? I said, listen, bitch, <laughs> can I do Apple Pay, and can we get out of here? <laughs> I haven't had a Diet Coke in nine minutes. I'm about to freak out. Uh, It's stressful up there at the McDonald's. Dude, yeah, the other day, they, like, I pulled up to the window to order your food, and you just, they didn't say anything for, like, 15 minutes. I waited. I waited for a long time before I was like, No, 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 that's the new thing they do is they won't even take your order until they feel like they're ready for it. Which I think is weird. I personally would want to get those people committed to the idea that their food is being made as early as possible so they stay in line and they actually end up paying. Plenty of people leave that line. Like if you sit, and sometimes I'll be backed all the way up to the entrance, and I'm like, none of half these people are not staying. About half, five of these cars are going to say, fuck this, I'm going to Wendy's. Oh, Wendy's, man. Wendy's is good. Wendy's is good as a bitch. You gotta dip them fries in the frosty. That's the way to do it. Every time. That spicy chicken. The spicy nuggets in the frosty, bitch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't even. Oh, Barry, talk to me about Astro World. Man. That really sucked. <laughs> I feel like people. So it was a whole festival. Astro, yeah, and yeah. it was, it was and Travis festival. Scott was sponsoring it and putting it on. It was his festival. Yeah, it was his. It was his thing, and it looked like it was oversold. It was just packed. That's what I mean. Just I saw like, like video of and they people did... walking past like the gates where people were for the crowd or whatever, and they were just spilling over these barriers. I'm like, maybe we should back them out a little bit. Like, what's the... They didn't have the resources or the planning. Like, they didn't so, have Here's some of the stuff I heard. Um, at least eight people died. Yeah, and a couple other people have died since then. Several of them were, uh, like, stomped on and trampled and, like, like moshed to death. Yeah. It's also, a- I heard a weird thing that a security guard got stabbed with a needle and then had to be resuscitated with Narcan. I and, heard stuff about that, but I don't know, like... And so that was one of the things that people were like, maybe it was, like, an organized attack that somebody s- drugged a bunch of people in this mosh pit, and that's why they went down, and that's why they couldn't get it back up, and they got trampled. I mean, yeah, but there was also just this whole... Like, he could have stopped the show, you know? <clears throat> like... And I've also seen stuff that, like, when you're wearing in-ear monitors, you may not hear people screaming at you at the thing, but also... Why didn't security stop the show? Nobody, like, I don't know. Nobody intervened. And he was, like, the part, like, he had everybody put their middle fingers in the air. And it was just like, oh, come on, man. There's, like, an ambulance visible. 
Like Oh, there was an ambulance out and the and the, the show kept going? Yeah. Yeah, that's not a good look. No, not at all. And he's like stopped shows before when somebody like stole his shoes when he was crowd surfing. And he stopped a show over that, but this and then some people died. It's just like so I thought you said you had a lot on this. Yeah, I mean, do you feel like that's a lot? Maybe not a ton, a ton. I mean, you feel like we covered it though. I'm not married to it. There's other stuff to talk about. We're I doing great on time. We're almost forty minutes in. Oh yeah, yeah. We can keep going. You want to keep cranking? Yeah. Um, there's this movie you got to go watch. Uh, we watched it on some app for free. Uh, it was called The Gay Deceivers. What was that? It's about? from 1969. And so it starts off with these two young gentlemen going to the draft office um, for Vietnam and presenting as very flamboyantly homosexual, trying to use that as a way to get out of having to go to Vietnam in the draft. And it works, but then it turns into this whole thing where they have to keep pretending to be gay because the, the lieutenant recruiter guy keeps checking in on them. And hilarity ensues. <laughs> it's really, really, really fun. Uh, I'm going to have to check it out. What did really you say you funny. watched it on? Oh, it's like on Voodoo or fucking T-Box or some shit. I'll find, I'll find you a link before you leave. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Really good. Go watch that. That's your homework. Also, last night, I watched Thanks Killing for the first time. Oh! I was at a dinner party with some girlfriends and one of them is getting married and my wife is in the inner circle of people involved in helping the wedding happen. I don't want to say she's a bridesmaid because I don't know. I don't think there's like a wedding party like that, but she's one of those type of figures in the wedding. So she got a gift from the bride to be and it happened to be a DVD box set of Thanks Killing and Thanks Killing 3. That is amazing because there is no thanks killing two wait why not they made a sequel and they called it thanks killing three i guess they wanted to accelerate the absurdity factor with like you know halloween eight nightmare on elm street seven freddy's not dead bitch <laughs> you know what i mean that dude, kind of vibe dude i have all those movies i have a box set of the nightmare i love that kind of stuff i love that whole genre of film oh, especially slashers, when it's ridiculous you know? and funny and you know um you ever see zombievers oh yeah that's another great that's a one. fucking jam i don't um, think i finished it i think i fell have asleep you, have you seen ginger dead man uh yeah that's a good one um yeah. did you see the man who killed hitler and then the bigfoot yeah it's yeah. my new favorite movie about world war ii <laughs> if you take the big actually the bigfoot part wasn't even the most interesting part that fucking hitler shit was deep and then when he gives his brother the dinosaur i cried <laughs> when he gives his brother back the dinosaur after 70 years oh, I, I seriously i teared up because you know i got yeah. a baby brother and if I had to kill Bigfoot, and then but then I lived, and I got to give my brother his Brontosaurus back, dude. That shit was so good. But it was weird, because they like faked his death, but he didn't have to move. I don't know. There were some holes. It's not perfect. It's not a perfect movie. It's but God I... damn it, I love Sam Elliott. <laughs> I'm trying to think of other movies in that vein. Like It's like horror, but like a meme. So Thanks Killing, if you don't know, is a really low-budget film. Where these grown adults that are supposed to be college students, uh, but they look much older, are going on Thanksgiving break and they get terrorized by a demonic um, turkey puppet thing that uh, comes back every so often uh, to avenge the, uh, you know, the some kind of Native American curse or something, right? That's the backstory. Yeah, yeah essentially that. It starts with a topless pilgrim running through the woods. And then she's getting chased by somebody, has a very Blair Witch kind of vibe for a minute. And then this turkey puppet pops out and says, nice tits, bitch. And then he kills her. It's just terrible. It's like Muppet quality. No, puppets, I mean, know? seriously. And this and the guy who's supposed to be like the hot football jock guy, he looks 37. Right. So, you know, they're supposed to be like college age, I guess. And they're, you know, it at school and they're going home for Thanksgiving break and they're just trying to party and then they get terrorized by this evil Turkey. And meanwhile, though, they're all like full adults. It's really hard to, to watch, uh, oh in any spirit other than that of comedy. Um, it's really good, really worth a watch. We streamed it last night cause we didn't want to hook up the DVD player. 
that's kind of funny. You get given the DVD and you're like, oh, cool, let's stream that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, really good. If you haven't seen The Gay Deceivers or Thanks Killing, check that out. Um, back to McDonald's. They pop up in my notes a lot. Uh, McDonald's is either uh, one of two ways now. It's either completely abandoned, typically in the afternoon or evening, sunrise closing as early as 7 or 8 p.m., other times running an entire store with literally only two employees. Or it's like a fucking episode of ER, like the most dramatic panic trailer for George Clooney's ER that you can imagine where, like, I'm like, what am I witnessing? Usually around 1030 in the morning, um, you know, people are screaming. There's like a dozen employees, but they're all freaking out. Like, I need to drop two hash browns. Stat! These fries are cold. We're losing him. Dude. Yeah, it's it's total. That's so accurate. I feel like it's either like popping or it's not. It's either popping or it's not. Yeah, McDonald's. Sometimes it's popping. Do you remember like not. when we were kids and like Steak and Shake was the place with the long drive through? Oh, it still is. Like if you were going to. Well, I'm sure. But now every place is like that. Yeah, but you true. can't. Nobody will let you in. Like, I see people all the time trying to say, fuck this line, I'll park. These people don't want to get out of their car and walk. I'll go walk. And then the door's locked. Dude, I'd do anything for one of them strawberry shakes. Stra no, strawberry banana. I do that love that they have the banana as an option. I'm yeah. not saying I get it every time, but I just love knowing I can when I'm craving banana. Apparently, artificial dessert banana flavoring like that is uh, all based on the flavor profile of a banana that we actually ate completely into extinction in the 1950s. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very different tasting banana than the bananas you get on the shelf at the shop and Glock. Well, you know, because I always thought like it, it doesn't really taste like a banana. It Nor certainly doesn't taste like the bananas you eat when you eat a fresh banana. It's, like a, much, it's a much sweeter... Uh, sort of syrupy kind of profile, and it's uh, you can't get them; they're extinct. I feel like watermelon. We literally ate them all. Watermelon flavors that way too, where it's like you taste it in a candy. It's like, what is that? Like you know, that's what candy watermelon tastes like. But no watermelon. Yeah. Tastes like oh that. yeah. Oh yeah. But yes, the bananas going extinct. That's pretty crazy. I'm thinking like uh, maybe the uh, maybe the staffing crisis, especially as it pertains to low wage earners like those in food service, is continuing in spite of a potential issue with overpopulation and its effect on the workforce about how we can't sustain our population in terms of quality customer service. But on the other hand, we can't afford to adequately adequately employ the numbers of people that we actually need. Like, let's just say we got people to fill every vacant job right now and we paid them, say, $15 an hour, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that's actually possible. I think it's maybe something we're not talking about because nobody wants to talk about overpopulation because what do you, I mean, I'm not suggesting we kill people, right? Like Thanos? I'm not suggesting that. Not suggesting that at all. But, um, but you got to think about, let's just say there were nobody needed employees. Everybody had as many employees as they needed. And those employees felt like they had as many coworkers as they needed to make their job go the way it needs to go. And all those people were making at least $15 an hour. It's very possible that the economy can't support that. Right? Probably not. And because to do all those things where not only do we have everyone working where we need them, but they also are all getting what they think they are worth to make or whatever. Um, that's too many people. We can't afford it just because of the volume. It's too many people that would have to be working there because we have too many, like how many Starbucks do you know that if you built one across the street, both of them would always have a drive through line. You know what I mean? Right. That can't be a thing. Lots of Starbucks. Every time I go, there's a huge line. Any time of day. The one over at Chippewa here, the little drive through always mm -hmm. crazy. There's always like five cars in that line all day long. You could probably open another one, but you can't afford to staff it. And the overhead for a whole nother one and that whole thing. It's like our, our demand for even food. Because really, a lot of people don't cook ever they can't it doesn't make sense especially if they you know are a bartender and they live by themselves it doesn't really make sense for them to be at home spending lots of money on groceries for a big 
pile of food that they have to eat four or five different times. You know what I mean? Right. That's what I'm saying. I feel like eventually some of these these jobs, though, like especially fast food kind of jobs, they they're gonna be automated. Like at some point, right? I I can't believe that one of the fast food chains doesn't have a kiosk, like where you just go and right. it, it's a Taco Bell kiosk, and maybe it's the size of a red box uh, or bigger even, but like the machine can't make me a bean burrito with no onions and extra red sauce. I think I see the, the places on YouTube all the time where they make the pizzas with the robots. Right. I mean, I mean, it's totally the technology's there. It's just implementing it. Granted though, that leaves in question the people who work fast food, like how can they be re like retrained like or or just what would they be retrained to do or reabsorbed into yeah like would they st- like do you just fire all these people i feel like that's not ethical well no. you could even phase them out though because nobody's taking their jobs when they leave yeah you know what true. i mean like um like what they did with the police force in st louis city they uh they said we're just going to take down the you know 800 jobs that nobody's applied for. We're just going to not fill them. Yeah. So eventually, yeah. I mean, especially the McDonald's I go to three or four times a day, um, several <laughs> of them, uh, that uh, it would not be long at all until there's only two people left working there on a Friday night. And so, I mean, maybe you need one of them to refill the kiosk with mayonnaise. I mean, you could almost have vendors that do that, though, and travel around to different well, stores. Well, that's like the QT Kitchens model. Right. It's like right. they prep all that stuff at a distributor or whoever makes it for them, the catering people that populate that right. food, and then they deliver it to the Quick Trip, and then at Quick Trip, they heat it up and serve it. You know what I mean? I mean, there was oh, all yeah. the roller shit just comes in big bags in boxes. You just dump out yeah. a satchel full of taquitos and let them sit there for 30 minutes and they're hot and ready, baby girl. Those are fire. And the I love their pretzels. Too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are good, yeah, too. Yeah, but like the cold stuff, like the wraps and shit, nobody's coming in at 2 a.m. to make Italian subs at the Quick Trip. They make 500 Italian subs on a Monday in Florissant in a warehouse and then they drop a bunch of them off at all the different quick trip locations which we need more of quick trip needs to figure their life out we need more quick trips dude there are a few intersections that i've seen that have a quick trip a cane's chicken and a white castle like Mm -hmm. all on separate corners yeah there's like three of them in st louis yeah that's a good trifecta you get some chicken rings, get some chicken strips, and get some chicken rollers, brother. You get chicken three ways at that intersection. Intersection. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like. Sweet. So the eye of the Sahara looks like a cinnamon roll. Do you got time to talk about this? Oh, dude. Yeah, absolutely. This is what I'm talking we about. We were talking about this the other day at work, Barry and I. Uh, let's explore... Oh, from NASA, little background here. The eye of the Sahara, also known as the, uh, is it the Rishat? The Rishat. Rishat structure. I think so. In northwestern, uh, is it Mauritania? I think so. It's a circular geologic feature. It's thought to be caused by an uplifted dome. Geologists would classify it as a domed uh, anticline that has been eroded to expose the original flat rock layers. So you got to look at the eye of the Sahara. It's a formation in the ground that looks like a giant eyeball or a fucking cinnamon roll. It's got massive deposits of salt on top of it as if, as if maybe it was one time um, under the ocean. Very exciting. Uh, what's exciting about that, Barry? So, uh, I recently, I started following this YouTube channel, Bright Insight. Super interesting. This guy's really smart. Uh, talks about the Rashat structure, though, in a couple of his videos and proposes this really interesting argument for it being the location of the ancient lost city of Atlantis. 
I think he proposes some interesting points on its location in regards to like uh what old philosophers have like said about it uh, i think plato yeah they talked a lot about one. plato yeah. which is way right. early in intellectual yeah. human history and um didn't he talk about some of the things he talked about were how ancient egyptians had document of these people they refer to as these sort of like migrant refugees whose home had been lost to flooding right right which uh from about the area where the eye of the Sahara uh, sits currently and that um, goes into something I was telling you about, about how I was watching something about how the Sphinx could possibly be much older than the pyramids and how mm -hmm. they built the pyramids around what was already there. And this whole thing of civilized humanity being much older than uh, it's talked about being commonly. And that's kind of how we got on this subject. Right. And so that's What's... one of the things I remember him saying Plato wrote about what, what, what were you, where were you going? Oh, yeah, just like how, how they talked about this place and have uh, like a geological reference for it, like or geolocational. And there's tons you know? of illustrations and, and whatnot of um, what the capital of Atlantis was described was to, look to, like. to look like. And it has an eerie um, uh, resemblance in shape to uh, this eye of the Sahara Rick shots, uh, Rick shot, mm. sorry, uh, structure. And people see, so to... I want to go here, add this to my African safari honeymoon that we're planning right now. Oh yeah. Go to it. I'm going to, I want to get in a cage with a shark. I want to, uh, I don't want to eat monkey brains. Yeah. I feel like that. But I do want to see, I do want to see, a, I, I maybe want to eat at a place where that's an option. Yeah. Maybe just see and it. And then we're going to go solve this whole Atlantis thing. We're going to cinch it up. Also, there was a huge release of government documents over the course of several decades where there are studies of numerous areas around the world that are of interest, including this one. And then it said something in the study that you showed me the other day that I'd seen in this video uh, where it's like uh, the findings of this study um, oh, I can pull, are I not I to be it. classified at any point, blah, blah, blah. But then they red act like the next whole page, like huge section of it just yeah, says it says. While the scientific aspects of this survey are totally unclassified and available to the worldwide scientific community, blank. And then there's like a whole fat paragraph and go on to the next page that's just been whited out. They yeah. also won't name the navigation system or, or it's named, but they won't tell you what kind of navigation system it is. And the project is called... What navigation system? Like the navigation system that they're supposedly testing for uh, in these geomagnetic anomaly That's type locations i didn't even know this was like a, a thing that people did yeah and it's just it sounds interesting well to say the least barry they did this to conduct uh airborne geomagnetic surveys and why do you do that to look for nukes see i don't think so i mean th that's not a geomagnetic thing and that's what i'm just, asking that's it's what just i'm asking like barry split, splitting an atom you know geomagnetic anomalies i guess it's places where the gravity is like measuring differently because you can you can measure gravity to a degree i mean that's how they can like that's how, that's how we know what it is yeah exactly it exists <laughs> but apparently these locations on the earth are different and it's just odd because some of them are in these eerie places like one is right over the shot structure and they have this crazy graph over like a topological image of the Rashad structure. And? I I don't understand what it means. Like, it, there's a lot of things that have been whited out in the document. It seems like they released just enough to be like, there it is, but also, like, not going to tell you what we were actually doing or why we were doing it. It it gives you the cold, like, like numbers, you know? Even... And so that's what they meant about and that's just so weird. They wouldn't even redact the part where they were going to just mention why they might redact something. You they know made what I mean? it look more like Whoa. way more suspicious <laughs> yeah. than if they had just said that there's goofy shit down there. Yeah, it just seems ridiculous. And what do you mean navigation system? They're, they're onboard navigation system. So 
So the subject is... Okay, okay. So from Commander Naval Oceanographic Office to Chairman Tri-Surface DAF Data Reduction Committee, Department of the Array, whatever data, that is. Data Reduction Committee. Yeah, I, I don't even know like what that could be. That's hilarious. Uh, but the subject of this was Geodetic Data Support DAF Data Reduction Program. <laughs> what? I don't know what any of that means. And, uh... But the whole reason the Rashad structure was, like, um, it, it looks like that now. Because, like, NASA told you what it is a result of volcanic activity or something. Yeah, that it had once been, like, a dome that had then collapsed. Well, and maybe it could... It, it, that could be true, and it still could have been the Well, and also location. one thing they mentioned in that um, bright something video was... Uh, the volcanic activity would cause landmass that especially that would be that old to fluctuate in height to sea level, obviously over the course of thousands of years. Right. And then he talks about the, the flooding and how it could have been a cataclysmic flood that took it out. Yeah. And that's like why a, there's no evidence. like a fucking meteor hits a fucking glacier and then Atlantis is underwater and you got the sea people marching to Egypt, the sea people. Right. Who called him that, right? There was somebody that was calling him that. Like, I saw some some blurb on that on YouTube at some point, but there's a whole documentary about the Sea People. I know that. And that was sort of one of the ways that they were referred to by other ancient cultures. I mean, they just ca they came from the sea, yeah. you know, and they seemed they had a different way. I think they're depicted as having like kilts and stuff like kilts. that. Kilts. Yeah. Oh, like they were like. OG Vikings, brother? Yeah, like, I think it could be possible. Descendant of, perhaps? Man, a kilt would be convenient if you're on the beach all day. Oh, yeah. Trying to dig your furnitures out of, you know... I mean, you're living in a valley park of ancient Africa. Just constantly underwater. But where'd they go from there, you know? Well, I think they, they bred into the civilizations that offered them refuge, and then they just kind of disappeared. I mean, this is ancient DNA we're talking about. So these people were advanced in their at least organized civilization, maybe not their technology, who knows, um, by the time that Egyptian civilizations caught up to where the point where they would document evidence of these people, right? Yeah. And who knows how long the flooding took to take place because this whole era is under-researched because... The establishment historians want want to tie a bow on the ancient Egypt thing and say, you know, this was all built at the same time, and this is we know everything about this. Let's move on. You know, it's, it's challenging. Right. Woo, Barry. Yep. Put a pin in that. Oh yeah. Is that the outro. That's the outro. It's probably about that time. How long was that? Oh, well, this comes up right when we're about to hit an hour. Oh, sweet. Guys, that's another episode of Jacob V Weekly. High five. Follow us wherever you get your podcasts. Spotify, Apple, Podbean, Google, whatever. Please subscribe, rate, review, interact in any kind of way. Share it. Spotify is tracking shares now. So if you share an episode with somebody, that's helpful too. Love you. Keep it up. Prayer warriors. We have an Instagram page for the show at Jacob V Weekly, where we post exclusive content and clips and highlights on occasion. Um, please find us on Patreon. It's the only way to financially support the show. And in exchange, you get exclusive, never before released content every week. Things that are not available anywhere else, even for me. You can contact the show at 314-632-6602 or at jacobvweekly at gmail.com. That's 314 632 6602 leave me a voicemail we'll play it on the show um original music by me on all of your platforms go ahead and bang it bitches keep it deep <laughs>